So you've seen me in my other videos using ISDT products and I really like their products because they are inexpensive and have nice interfaces and do what they say they're going to do. This T8 was one of, I think it was the first ISDT product I purchased and it served me very well. I've been very happy with it. I use it all the time. Um, but they came out with the Q8. It's kind of like a slightly smaller version of the T8 and I decided to grab this. This T8 is the first version and I think they've made some improvements to the um, to the uh, balancing functions of the T8 and so I could buy another T8 but they're about a hundred dollars when the Q8 um, I think this was thirty dollars something like that and this is a full balancer charger you know monitor and this one's this one's rated at 500 watts this is rated at a thousand watts but I mean 500 watts is still plenty of power for you know when you're trying to top up a battery or do a balance or, or whatever um, you know 500 watts really is plenty of power I mean I don't even really have power bricks that can push a thousand watts and you know you need to put in a power brick to do your charging in that so you know, to use the thousand watts, I'd have to use one of those like HP um, server power supplies or something like that, where I'd rather, you know, so I'd, I never have, a, I'm not going to have a power brick big enough to use all thousand watts, so I might as well just get the 500 watt version, which is what the Q8 is. Now, you should know that they make the T6 and the Q6. Don't get the T6 or the Q6. That The 6 and the 8 represents how many cells in series it can handle. So a T, the T6 and the Q6 are rated for a 6S battery. If you do power walls, e-bikes, you are never going to use anything. Uh, you're never going to use a 6, you know, 6 series battery. The smallest battery you're going to do is probably a 24 volt battery, which is a 7S. So please get the Q8 or the T8. Don't get any of the 6 series um, chargers. Speaking of, that is one of the main reasons I build in 24 volts. Because 7S is supported by a lot of inexpensive, char you know, RC charges and that. Balance functions, all of that is, is done by, it can, it can be handled by one of these sort of cheap um, RC charges. When you build at 48 volts, they don't make these sort of inexpensive battery monitors and chargers with a you know that would need a 14s you know you would need a 14s balance port they just don't really do that and so um that's why i prefer to build at 24 volts because you you get access to these you can use these these rc charge controllers and balance um um off a, with a 7s balance wire um obviously 24 means I push more amps than a 48 volt system, but you deal with it. Um, that's a trade off. Again, I, my system is, is only pushing 2000 watts. That's pl so the amps are not an issue. When you start building 5000, you know, when you need to start to push, you know, 5000 watts or 10,000 watts, you will have to move to 48 volts um, just because the amps are gonna get too much for, for cabling and, and everything like that. But for us, for a smaller power wall system, I, I prefer 24 volts. And that's even why I actually, instead of taking my two 20 volt, four volt packs and then doing, you know, seriesing them up into a 48 volt pack, I left them as two 24 volt packs in, in parallel. And now I can use these individual monitors and balancers to keep an eye on my, my system. Anyways, enough talk. Let's open this up and see what we got. And then we will fire it up and, and test it out. Okay, let's see here. Some stickers. Here it is. A lot smaller than the uh, T8. Um, same interface. Everything is XT60 connectors, which is nice because I use a lot of XT60s on all my stuff. Um, and then the one nice thing about this is this actually has um, firmware updates through USB. The, the T8 does not have any USB on it. It does not take firmware updates through um, through USB. You actually have to buy a weird um, 
you have to buy a weird special cable that uses a three and a half millimeter like audio jack to do the updates. That's actually the update port, this weird three and a half millimeter audio jack. That's actually where the updates are sent in. So, but this, thank goodness, you can just plug in a, a micro USB, char, you know, USB cable and, and do your updates. All right, let me um, hook this up to one of my batteries and we'll start to look over it. Let me show you quickly how I use these things. I have a um, XT60 that hooks up to a couple of croc clamps. You can see it over there and over there. And that allows me to, you know, easily attach this to my big battery bank. And another thing I have is I always have an, a secondary balance lead that I, that I build into all my packs. And that balance lead, I run through an extension, and now that goes over to the ISDT. And that allows me to, um, you know, monitor the pack and charge it and balance it as I need to. Um, but, uh, yeah, let's check out the software. Okay, let's plug this thing in and see what it looks like. All right, so it is, and, and you should know these devices are always powered by, they don't power up just off the battery voltage, they always need to be powered by um, sort of an, your, your, char, you know, your charging brick. All right, so I have the charging brick coming in. You can see it's uh, telling me the voltages of all my batteries, 4.17161617131617. That 1.3 is that lower pack that I had um, recently did some maintenance on. I haven't um, brought it in line with the other um, batteries because um, my solar system is actually down right now because I'm doing some construction on my house. So I kind of stopped uh, uh, bringing some, you know. Anyways, I sort of stopped messing with it for a little while. But, uh, uh, you know, we can, that's what this device is for. And we can actually use this to um, do that. And actually, let me peel off the... The protector that I just tore the tab off. Okay. Don't know if there is a screen on there or not. Okay, let's go through the... Um, so here it's got some... Yep. Up. So let's see what our options are. Charge, discharge, storage, DC power, destroy. Interesting. There are definitely some new options in here that weren't in the T8. I'm not sure what... Uh, destroyers DC power I think is like you use this um, very much like as a um, as a uh, sort of a bench power supply you sort of punch in whatever voltage you wanted to ex uh, put out and then it just does it just outputs whatever voltage you set it very much like a bench power supply I have actually sort of used my t8 as a bench power supply before but that was me rigging it now it seems to be actually supported from from factory okay so obviously we're not using lipo we're using lithium-ion okay condition what you know so 4.15 is the highest that this will let you go which is fine because um, you know even though 4.2 is your maximum voltage for lithium-ion 4.15 is is a nice conservative you can see it's already detected a 7s um, 7s configuration because the charge lead is attached now current um, I only have a 2 amp power supply right attached right now, so I can't push 5 amps Interesting this button is sort of Let's be conservative Whoop. Let's put 1.5 um, now um, the uh, You'll notice, let me go back here, you'll notice that on the task, there is no balance option. The balance is automatic. It's built into the charge function. So as you charge, and this is the same with my T8, as you charge, it does the balance as part of the charge. So you just put it into charge mode and start throwing some, throwing some voltage at it and it'll, um, and it'll uh, do the balance. Um, here we go, this is firing up um, and beginning the charge and the balance function. Um, you'll notice that only cell 2 is below 4.15, so it's in I'll be interested to see how it handles this because um, 
you know, all the other batteries are already over 4.15. So in theory, it doesn't need to charge those. It only needs to charge cell two. So I'm interested to see how it handles this. I did, uh, yeah, we'll have to see. In theory, it, it almost needs to bring down all the packs except for cell two. So I'm gonna let this run for a second and we will see um, what it, how it handles things. Actually, it's already bringing up pack two. Pack 2 is already ridden, risen up. So, um, interesting. So, this might just be putting in all its amps pretty much to pack 2, which would be ideal. That's how you want a balancer to work, is to put the amperage just on the cell that's needed. So, I'm going to let this run for a minute, and we will see what happens. So, this is interesting. It has switched from orange charge mode to bl uh, green balancing mode. So um, it has stopped charging. It is no longer, you can see the amps in the top left that has stopped pulling um, current. And now it's jumped into balancing mode. So we will see what it does now. I don't know if it's going to active balance up or if it's going to, um, you know, balance down by running everything through a resistor. So we'll see what it does. We can see all the, all the packs are at 4.16 except pack two. So we'll see if pack two goes up or if the other packs come down. We'll see what it does as far as balancing goes. Okay, let's go through and check these cells. Um, cell two is the lowest and it's drifting between 4.15 and 4.14 on the meter here. Um, everything else is kind of stable at 4.15 or 4.16. So we'll go through and, and see how close the the meter is and um, well anyways we'll put them uh, put a mul my multimeter on everything and see how close we are so cell one according to this is 4.15 and cell one I have 4.15 cell two is 4.15 here but it, it has been drifting down to 4.14 so let's just check it here multimeter says yeah multimeter is also drifting between 4.14 and 4.15 okay cell three 4.16 and I have 4.15 cell 4 uh, 4.16 and I have 4.16 cell 5 4.16 I have 4.15 cell 6 4.15 4.16 and the last cell 4.16 4.16 so um, I'm pretty happy with uh, the balance and the accuracy of the, um, of the uh, cell voltages on the ISDT. And um, yeah, that'll work. You can see cell 2 just drifted to 4.14, which is what the multimeter read as well. So anyways, that's it.